think, yeah, no, I know, I know what you're saying. No, that's about. what it is, man. It's just. Do you want to come closer, sister? Or are you okay there? I'm all right. Okay, I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Say that again. Where does that leave women? Then what is the what you believe the Sharia law to be towards women? Then look, sister. What what I say is this shit. You notice there's a lot of men here. Don't see many women. Yeah. No. There is some women there. Look. There's one there. Uh -huh. men, yeah, but usually uh, it's, it's not because women. You have a lot of sisters here as well, but usually these yeah these these Muslims yeah you gotta be careful with them. Some this Muslims. is this. I would encourage if you can if you, you, can, something <laughs> if you can get this book, the woman in the text. Yeah, it was written by my teacher. It talks about all the misconceptions about wife beating, about the two witnesses to man. All of that is mentioned there. The Sharia when the Sharia came down in Saudi Arabia, yeah, fourteen hundred years ago. This is how it worked. Men had rights. The donkey had rights. And then it was a woman, yeah. literally, yeah? Now, women were treated like prostitutes, yeah? They had no rights. When Islam came, you can look in the Quran, if you read it for yourself, it gave the woman a right to own property. Before, the woman was a property. Thank you. Thank you, Why does that woman do half of a man? Why does that woman do half of a man? Half of what? Man? It says no. woman do half of a man. The bit the Quran? No, 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 we're talking about witness testimony in specific situations, yeah? Right. Okay, so when it came to Saudi Arabia, women had no rights. They were inherited. So for example, if I went to war, my wife died, my brother will inherit her like she's property. So she, she's like a property. Hey, you're mine now. Yeah. Islam came to abolish that. In Surah Nisa, Allah talks about that. Uh, Allah came to demolish that, yeah? Because women are not property. The women were given the rights that feminists were fighting to get them 100 years ago. The right to vote. The right to own property, the right to choose who you want to marry, the right to not adopt your uh, uh, husband's surname. Are you guys married? No, not yet. If you get married, they call me to the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to adopt this surname. Why do you need to adopt this surname for? Yeah. Why? You don't have to. Simple as that. Um, the the right to work. Yeah. Even when it comes to, for example, in Islam, we have something called if if I have a sister, my dad leaves a hundred grand. Yeah. Hopefully, um, if he leaves a hundred grand, yeah. Oh. I, <laughs> Blood money, though. <laughs> no, no, no blood money. I get 66 grand, she gets 34 grand, yeah? Now, from the outset, it looks like, hold on a second, that's injustice, yeah? But look at the way it works. The 34 grand that she gets, I can't touch a penny. Her husband can't touch a penny. Point number one. The money that I get, I need to spend on my mom, I need to spend on my sister, probably her wedding, and I need to spend it on my wife, yeah? Now, in Islam, when you want to marry a woman, you have to go through the father. Why do you need to go through the father? Because we believe Islam has come to protect the rights of women. Because a lot of the time, women get messed around. Yeah, there's a lot of players out there. I'm sure I hope you're not one of them, yeah? I'm gonna get you in trouble here, yeah? Okay. So why? Because if I want to marry a woman, I could easily manipulate her, lie to her, throw roses in the air, I'm Romeo, yes, let's get married. Use her and say bye-bye. Islam has come to stop this. Why? Because if I want to marry her, if she says to me, come and speak to my dad, if I'm a player, I don't want to see your dad. I don't want to talk to your dad at all, yeah? So, it's there to protect you. Why? Because if somebody wants to marry my daughter, a man knows a man. I'm going to question him. I'm going to interrogate him. I might even electrocute him. It might stop him yeah? from using it, right? does it? No, let me tell you how. First stage is what? As a father, I speak to the boy. I interrogate him. Okay, why do you want to marry my daughter? Da, 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 da. He needs to have sure, make sure that he's got people to answer to if he messes around, yeah? Number one, number one. Number two, the woman has a right for dowry. You know what dowry is? So for example, if you want to marry him, he, you can ask for whatever you like. 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand. Maybe you won't get married because you might price, not have the yeah, money. Yeah, no, no, no. Why? That's your right. That's your protection. Why? Really, it's not really a good right though. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why, sister. Yeah? Let me tell you why. That right is yours. Yeah? So the reason why it's yours is because, number one, again, if this man is after the wrong intention and he just wants to sleep with you, he will think to himself, why would I pay 20 grand? I could just go... Yeah, ain't worth the money. It ain't worth the money. But if he really loves you, he wants to spend the rest of his life with you, that's your right, he will give you that 20 grand. Now, that 20 grand belongs to you. So when I was talking about my sister, she got 34 grand, yes? Yeah. I got 66 grand. I'm spending it on my uh, wife, uh, my uh, sister, my mom. She keeps the 34 grand. On top of that, when she gets married, she's asking for dowry. Let's say it's, let's say it's 16 grand, for argument's sake, we'll round it up. She has now 50 grand. Her husband cannot touch one pound of that. 
he has to provide for her. He has to do shopping for her. He has to make sure she's got the latest yeah, Maybelline. Let's, let's talk about what she has to do. You know? No, no, but this is what I'm talking about. No, 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 this is the point. If women knew the rights of... Yeah. And I know you're saying that they have the right to buy, is they it? have the right to work, they have yeah. the right to work. But yeah. yeah. so how often do you see that? Sorry, bro. How often do you see a Muslim woman that's out, independent, working... No, no, she can, she can, no, no. She can, the prophet's no. wife, the prophet's no. wife. Why? No, 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 what I'm saying is, sister, look, yeah? Is it recording, Aki? Is the camera recording? Is the red light on? Just double check. Yeah, okay. So now, sister, look. The Prophet's first wife was a businesswoman. She proposed to the Prophet, yeah? Women in Islam can work, yeah? Do you want to, do you want to put them down, sister? If you want, you can point out if they're hurting your hand, yeah? The thing is, sister, if a woman wants to work, she has a right to work, yeah? The, 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 Western, the Western women were not given these rights until the feminists start going on a mad one, yeah? All these rights, I'm telling you, the Western woman got it 100 years ago when the Muslim woman had it 1400 years ago, yeah? One of the first universities built by, it was by a Muslim woman, yeah? So women are encouraged to study. If they want to work, they can work. But what it says is that it's your choice. If she says, look, I want to be, I want to look after my kids. She has that right and the husband has to provide for her. So the husband can't say, oh, I'm not earning enough, go work. She can choose to. But she can turn around and say, no, it's your responsibility. I believe every woman would love that because your job doesn't mean like you're in the kitchen. It just means if you want to be a, a mother to your children, this housewife to him. I don't like the housewife, yeah? Okay. But it's just, if you want to stay at home, that's your right. But today, the society has made it that women have to go and work, yeah? And a lot of women, like career women, the reason they're coming out, they're in their 40s, they don't have any kids, and they actually curse the feminist movement. Why? Because they're thinking, okay, career, career, okay, now I'm in my 40s, I can't have kids anymore. What am I supposed to, to do? To be honest, we're quite old fashioned, so I don't disagree with that. Like, yeah. I agree with the man goes out, and I don't yeah. disagree with that. Yeah. Um, but, but it's like when you say you want, like, you know, Sharia for everyone, blah, blah, blah. And like that, you see yeah. these lands come in now to abort and get rid of that so that they, they're not treated like shit. But yes. How is that actually effective now? Is that the new, is the Sharia law being rewritten? I mean, if you no, want no, no, to that's, that's, the country, mm, yeah. you want us to follow Sharia, not Islam, so it's the Sharia law, mm. is it still... Where's the right up to date one yeah. then? The way okay, so for example, no right sister, right? this Sharia law I'm talking about, the reason why you're thinking it's a new update is because you've been told something else about Sharia. So when I'm telling you this, you're thinking this is news to me. You said back before yeah. that Sharia basically. No, no, that's what. That, no, no, that, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Sorry, I've, you've misheard me. Before Islam came, before the Sharia came, oh, the right. pagan Arabs used to do this. The Sharia came with these rights for the women. There was no Sharia before. It was pagan, pagan Arabs yeah. treating women like dirt, yeah? Sharia came to abolish that and say, women are not your garbage. I'd be intrigued to actually read the Sharia. I can't really say, I haven't, I haven't read it for a long time. You should, so you should get this, 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 this book, sister, is very, very good. This book, The Woman in the Text, you can order it on Amazon, I think it's three, four pounds, yeah? It's very good. You can read it for yourself, but it would really, really open your eyes, yeah? Did someone take my book? Oh, there it is. Okay, I thought someone took it. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, sister, all you need to do is this year, open your mind and read it for yourself. Not this person said this, this person said that. Because then you will see that the rights a Muslim woman has in Islam, yeah? And it's all there to protect your right, you know? Because you shouldn't, in today's society, women are treated as sexual objects. What on earth has a chocolate bar got to do with a naked woman? I don't understand. What has a car got to do with a woman? So the issue, sister, is Islam has come to preserve that. You're, look, why do I call you sister? Because I respect you. You're like my sister. If I see someone harassing you, I will go and stop it. Why? Because at the end of the day, I treat you like my sister. So when I say sister, I'm not saying it for the sake of it. I see you like my own sister. I respect you. And this is how we should be with everybody. We should have that respect. But today, it's not like that. You speak to a woman, all you're thinking about in your head is God knows what kind of stuff. Women are made to be like a sexual object. And we're saying you're a human being, you're a soul, you have rights. Why should you be walking down the street and being whistled at, cat calling? Is this, is this your value? And that's why I feel sad sometimes when I look at society and I see females dressing up a certain way. Why? Because men have pressure on them. Society has pressure. You need to wear this makeup. Your hair needs to look this way. Your body has to look this way. Why? Be yourself. Be, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it's that one extreme to another though, isn't it? Between having everything there and yeah. having everything covered with your eyes. You know, where do we draw the line? <coughs> Okay, in Islam, it tells you you can, should cover everywhere except your face and your hands. The women who cut the wear the niqab, they go the extra mile. Yeah. It doesn't, the Quran doesn't say that. Even though some differ that, it does, yeah? There's a difference of opinion. However, the reason why that is their sister, I'm not saying that 
uh, when you wear that, oh, you're not, men are not going to want to rape you. A rapist rapes, yeah? Regardless, yeah? However, what it is, sister, is that, for example, I, I was speaking to a lady about two weeks ago, yeah? And she was here, and <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, she was out, like full out, yeah? And I was talking to her, I had to talk to her like this. Yeah, sister. I couldn't look at her. Now, why? Because I respect her. Now, even though I believe she can dress however she likes, but what it is, as a men, God has created us in a certain way that our weakness is a woman, yeah? That's how it is. So now, when a woman covers up, let's say her face, and she's covering up, yeah? It protects her to a certain extent where, when a man is talking, he's talking to her, not to her, yeah? So it's there for a man to preserve his eyes, and also for a woman, it's a form of modesty, yeah? Now, I don't say that a woman who doesn't wear the hijab is a... No, I don't say that, yeah? Because you might be in attitude and behavior and modesty better than a woman who observes the hijab, but she does it, she does wrong things and you don't, yeah? She has the struggle in the modesty, you may have the struggle of the outer modesty. But the issue why it's there, sister, is to give you rights. Like I said before, women are sexualized, objectified, you have girls who go to university, yeah? And they have to pay for their student loans, they have to go strip clubs to work. Why? Why does she have to feel to sell her body? Is it, is it fair to make a child wear a hijab? Okay, you now... Like, that's the that's yes, thing yes, I say, yes. like, when you see young, yeah. young girls, four, yeah. five, six years old. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. like, and, and obviously like religion is practiced continuously, but I'm saying, they should have a chance to be children. Yeah, they should be playing in the park, they should be kicking but, the ball, okay, okay, they should okay. be drawing, they should... No, okay, they should okay, have okay. to be, like, have stuff, in my opinion, yes. like falls down, their, falls down their throat, you understand what I'm saying? Now, 100%. Look, just because they cover their hair, doesn't mean they cover their brain, yeah? You have scientists who are Muslim women in hijab, yeah? Now, at what age? Usually the age is said seven. Seven is a good age to start getting her to use the hijab. Me personally, I wouldn't, I have a daughter, I wouldn't get her to wear it at three, four, etc. Do you get it? But the whole point is just to get her used to it, yeah? And obviously she's still playing, look, she can still go play. The hijab doesn't stop her from going. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, no I'm yeah. just saying, yeah. no. but, but I'm saying from, but when I see, when I see people, when I see a family like that, yeah. I sit there and I think like, yeah. no, we're, we're with the children, have they yeah. got a choice in order to do that? Or is that something that's being, for, is that something that's being okay. forced upon them, being this, you know, because it's sort of, because they're trying to follow, they're following in the footsteps of their parents, aren't they? Okay. So they should be able to have some sort of, that opinion, like, they should mm. be able to, if they, if they want to wear it, they can wear it. If they don't want to wear yeah. it, they don't want it. It doesn't mean any less of a Muslim, does it? No, okay, 100%. But what, what, what I would say is, look, if you, you have children, yeah? yeah? Okay, you have a daughter? Yeah. yeah, you would want the best for your daughter. Yeah? yeah. So now, if you tell your daughter, for example, something, you tell her something. Yeah. Now, you're not forcing her. You believe that's what's best for her. So I can't come and say, yeah, let your children be. Why do you have to give her rules? But you're doing it because you want the best for her. Yeah. yeah. So now, the reason why I believe like there's certain age for it, seven years old to wear the hijab. Yeah. However, obviously, if she grows up and she finds it a struggle, it's a sin to take it off. But however, that's a struggle. Yeah. yeah, as men, I'm told to cover from my navel to my knee. I can't when I go swimming. I can't show my belly button. I have to wear something that either a long, uh, yeah. long johns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have to. Why? Because uh, Allah has told us that we have to cover from my navel to my knee. Yeah, so I have, I have to dress up in a certain way as well. I can't wear really tight jeans. Yeah, yeah I'm not allowed to. I have to lower my gaze. Yeah, Allah says to the believing man and the believing woman, lower your gazes, protect your private parts. Yeah. So the thing is, it's regulated for both of us. For a woman, it's different. For me, it's different, you know? I have my struggles that I have. So I, can, I can come and say, why is God making me the head of the household? I don't want to work, let her work. But it's their responsibility. And there's things that a woman is doing, can, uh, she, uh, does, which might be hard on her, might be easy on me, like I don't have to wear the hijab. Do you get it? Yeah. So God has legislated in different ways. Why? Because God wants to commit, protect the family unit, you know? So yeah, man, look, in, in, in a nutshell, like I said before, if you look into history, if you look at women's rights, do research, you'll be mind blown. I was in this, I'm telling you, and I was... And when you were saying that thing about 100 years ago in this country, was it that said that? Yeah, 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 let me get you, let me get you, yeah. It's uh, William something, let me get you. You can read it. Because when I confronted Tony Robinson, I mentioned it to him there as well. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned it because it's, it's in the uh, law. Uh, when you say it's like the court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. It took, it took me three, four months to find it. <laughs> Well, that's what, start. what was that book called? Uh, you know what it says about uh, you can marry at seven in this. What was the book, book called? William. William, William Blackstone of Indri English commentary of uh, what? Commentary of the English law. William what? Blackstone. William Blackstone. Okay, how far are you? I remember. 
Okay, okay no problem. Okay. Okay. William Blackstone, the common show of English law. Yeah, if you check it there, I had a picture of it, but I can't find it. Yeah, yeah it's there. there. Yeah, yeah, check it out, man. You know, like, that's why we're here, man. Just, you know, the dialogue with people, learning different discussions and yeah, research. It opens your eyes. Yeah, no, it's our yeah. first time down here today, so we're having a little one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what people got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a bit, it's nice to meet you. All right, sweet. Sister, thank you very much. God bless. Don't, don't shake his hand, you <laughs> 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 Okay, bye.